Welcome back to Tech Yes City and here we are at the source. This is where it all goes down. I found this place a couple of weeks ago and the person I met, they were really nice and they let me go through some of these dumpsters and then I was talking to them and as we got talking, they just started telling me about how much stuff people just chuck out and they just don't want it anymore. And I mean, of course, some of it's not going to work, but then some of it is going to work. And today we've got just like a few dumpsters to go through and see what we can find. And of course, we're gonna then take it back to the studio and start testing it out. But how a lot of these places work is they'll get just heaps of dumpsters in of just random stuff. People will just chuck all their stuff away and they just wanna get rid of it. And then they'll sift through it and segregate it into things like broken monitors, uh, cases, power supplies, motherboards. And so from there, uh, I guess they then either just sell it off for the materials or in cases of guys like me, <laughs> I could come along and have a quick pick and see if anything works. And that's exactly what we're gonna do here today. So if you guys want some of the best prices on used tech, or even in this case, if you wanna try and build a PC for free, then you might wanna try and hook up maybe and try and find if you can go down to the local tip or the local recycling center and just see if you can get to know someone there and see if you can sort of make some arrangement, especially if you're going to be uh, hooking up with someone that is just, they, they, they like you and they like what you do with the stuff. In the case of the person here, they, they heard my plight and they know that I recycle all this stuff and put it back to good use and essentially saving waste. So uh, let's, I guess, let's just get straight into it and see what we get out of these bins. If you want to get rid of this annoying activate Windows message, then today's video sponsor SCD Keys has you covered for as little as 12 US dollars. After you enter that coupon code BFTYC, you can cop yourself a legit single end user license today. Links in the description below. Here we are now back at the studio. We're actually a few days later after this whole dumpster dive. We are now here ready to take a look at these five motherboards. Now, it was just a crazy weekend. I went through one of the busiest weekends in terms of PC flipping. And actually, this was a funny thing. I pulled three monitors out of a dumpster that I ended up uh, using because they all worked perfectly fine. So even if these motherboards don't work here today, I've already become a winner in that all the stuff that came out of these dumpsters was all free. Now you're probably wondering, Brian, why don't you just get more and more? And this is the first part that we've got to talk about here because this is where I, I, um, I went to buy something off the said person. I got a 10400 FPC and I got some DDR3 memory and stuff like that. But when I was there, it was very busy and so like I had to make work what I could in the time that I had, if that makes any sense. So if you're going to a place to do some dumpster diving, then sort of you got to read the air in the room. Uh, when I went there, it was just really busy. There was people everywhere. I knew I was getting in people's way if I took too much time. So I just had to be really quick in what I was picking up. Now, of course, that said, I'm going to be calling the said person up and then trying to organize a time when they're not so busy and I can sort of go through the dumpsters a little bit more in depth and I'll pick out more things that I think are potentially really good. But this time around, I literally had like five minutes max. I had a camera in one hand and I got the other hand just picking out stuff that potentially could make some really good gaming PCs if it was to be fixed up. So if you guys do want to go dumpster diving, at least in Australia, then you do have to know the right people, but you also have to realize that it is time constrained as well. A lot of these people have lives. If you're sitting there going through their dumpster and interrupting their workflow, then you're probably not gonna get invited back. But that said, let's go through what we've got here on the table and then see what I think is potentially wrong with these parts. And then we'll try and fix those problems, see if we get some success. And then we'll talk about a little bit more about dumpster diving in general 
and why a lot of this stuff ends up in the trash and why, of course, it's free. So the first part we've got up here is a P55 motherboard. Yes, it's quite old, over 10 years old, in fact, but it's got an i7-870 4-core 8 thread. Now, the most common reason for someone throwing this in the dumpster, in my opinion, would just be simply its age. At least that's what I hope it is because then everything will work and I'll be extracting a huge amount of value out of this free pickup as it doesn't look like there's actually anything physically wrong with any of these parts here. We've also got four gigabytes of RAM, so let's quickly put this now to the test and see if it boots up. And there it is with our motherboard, CPU and RAM combo. Looks like it's all working absolutely fine. Of course, I do have to turn this off relatively quickly because I'm using a heatsink without a fan on it. But there it is, someone just chucked that out because they didn't want it anymore. So this next one is very obvious to see what's going on here. And that is we've got the PCI socket, the ADEX socket. Looks like someone has, instead of opening this lock here, they've just ripped the whole device out and that's caused this whole socket to just rip out with it, the plastic socket. So I guess this time around, one of the few examples of where you'd need those uh, steel reinforced slots. But uh, how we're fixing this is very easy. I've actually fixed up this problem in the past. I've seen it happen on especially secondhand gear that people chuck out. And so what we're gonna do is actually just chop all these pins off so they're not uh, look, in case of these ones right over here, they're all touching each other. So that's gonna be shorting things out. And so what we're gonna do now is just cut them all off. Then that way there's no chance of them shorting against one another. However, of course, the downside to that is that we're knocking out a whole PCIe slot that's unusable. But this motherboard does look like it's got a huge amount of PCIe connectivity, even with this upcoming missing slot. And of course, I'm hoping that's just the problem here. Of course, before the person chucked it out, they would have come into this problem. Maybe they're looking to sell it and then they realize, oh no, the board's just completely useless now. But really, let's see how quick we can fix this and then see if it boots up. I'm guessing about five minutes. So that's two motherboards for two now that are working perfectly fine after we've just done virtually nothing to them. It hasn't taken long to bring this back to life. So that's an X79 motherboard with an i7-3820 inside. They've even been as kind enough to leave us a Logitech dongle. I mean, depends on what this is for, but this could be anywhere worth of 10 to 15 bucks. So this next one, I'm actually not too hopeful for even going into trying to clean it and bring things back because the rear of the board, it's not actually the fact that there's you know a little bit of rust on the input output, it's actually the rear of the board that's been damaged heavily in that there's very deep scratches which look like they're going into the traces. And so if you're knocking out traces on a motherboard, the problem there is it can be just as bad as knocking out, say for instance, pins on a CPU socket. That's two connection points that are now severed. And when you do that, it's gonna stop the motherboard from functioning properly. So we're still gonna give this a go. We're still gonna bend back a few of these pins here, take the heat sinks off, clean it down quickly, and then any pins that look like they're shorting out at the front here, we're gonna quickly bend them back out of the way so they're no longer touching one another. And then let's see if we can give this a shot, get it working again. some really good news and that is this b85 g43 gaming motherboard works fine i was surprised i thought the scratches on the back and the corrosion would have stopped this from working but we bent the pins back and the thing booted up however there was a bit of a problem here which is what i'm showing you now and this is with these top ram slot the one on the outer side of the motherboard and it just you can see here it doesn't go in properly on the right hand side and so 
when I see this problem, and I have seen it, it's rare, but I have seen it in the past. So I honestly, when, these, when, the, when the ticket like that doesn't work, I just then pull the whole thing out, which that way it's not gonna stop it from, uh, it's not gonna stop it from sort of uh, n not contacting properly, which is what it was doing. So we've just pulled that out now and our RAM slot should go in absolutely fine. So our RAM stick, sorry, <laughs> RAM slot. Our RAM stick should go in perfectly fine now and that shouldn't cause any issues. Now, one more thing we're gonna do as well is we're gonna clean this down later and that's just gonna, and then we're gonna coat it with a multi-purpose spray and that's just essentially going to stop the board from any further corrosion and also clean off all the corrosion that's on it right now. So this next one is a P67 UD3R, so second generation and this one looks very similar to the previous uh, Z87, the MSI board, and that has bent pins and a little bit of corrosion, but it doesn't look like it is as bad. In other words, corrosion doesn't look like it's as advanced as the previous board, but the pins do look like we have a few more bent pins here. So what we're gonna do is quickly bend these pins back, see if this one works. And if it does, it's going to go in the ultrasonic clean pile just like the previous board. So this motherboard, unfortunately, it is just boot cycling. It's powering on, then powering off, which for me means that there's something wrong around the VRM area, whether it's still the CPU pins or if there's debris lodged in actually what i think is the problem is there's like debris that's seeped into the back behind the motherboard on the actual socket itself so we won't be able to get this until we wash it in the ultrasonic cleaner which we're going to be doing that anyhow for that msi motherboard so we might as well chuck this in at the same time and then see if this can come out working after we give it that clean and now we're saving the best until last this is a z390 that looks brand new except for one big problem, and that is there is a lot of bent pins. So I'm guessing the person who just chucked this out, they went back to the retailer, probably couldn't get a refund because retailers won't take the refunds on bent pins. And then they're like, well, this thing doesn't work, and they just threw it in the bin. Though I've actually got an i5-9500 on hand that I'm hoping if we can bend these pins back, we'll have a whole base for a very good six core build. So let the bending begin with our magical toothpick. So we've got like a gunk that's stuck in between these pins and it's actually sort of stopping me from seeing the pins and bending them back properly. So we're gonna use some brake cleaner, our trusty old friend here at Tech Yes City, and get all that crap out and then get back to bending those pins. So we've got some great news and that is we are now four for five and our Z390 Tough Gaming Motherboard is working perfectly fine too, even though, even though when we we're doing the pin bending process, we actually lost two pins because they were bent in the, they're what I call reverse bends, in that someone, I don't know how people do this, but they bend pins so hard that they, they end up going the wrong way, and when you bend them back, the integrity of the pin gets so weak that it just snaps off, and unfortunately we had two of those on this board, but it seems to be like they weren't two critical pins. So everything is gonna be A-OK -okay and work absolutely fine. So really stoked about that, because that's a pretty solid motherboard. But it's now time to put on that ultrasonic cleaner, chuck those two really filthy boards in, and then get talking about dumpster diving.
So we just finished up cleaning those two motherboards and the P67, unfortunately, we just couldn't get that to work. And it was just doing the same thing as it was before it got the wash. And that was that it was boot looping and with all the four LEDs on. And this goes back to the critical damage that it sustained, I believe, on the back of the board. Because when you slice into those um, traces, just even cutting one of them off can be like Final Fantasy. And then, you know, you're playing Final Fantasy and either you or the enemy gets a critical hit and then you're kind of like limping for the rest of the, the fight. And uh, this, yeah, th that's what this motherboard's doing. It's, it's just limping and it's not coming back. However, in the end, we did get four of those five motherboards working and we scored big time, especially in the case of that Z390. That had a lot of messy pins on it, but the i5-9500 ended up coming through. So now those boards are good to go. But what we saw here today with the magic of dumpster diving, this is a whole new world for me where I've only really touched on it twice now and it's only been relatively quick. And so what I hope to do the next time I do this is to start going more into the builds and some of the stuff in these dumpsters, but I'll have to make a bit more time aside with the person that I know there and make sure that they're not so busy and they're not in the middle of a whole heap of different things. Because when you go there on a Friday, it's the end of the week, they're all gonna clear out, there's all these jobs they're gonna get through. So I think maybe going on a Monday might be a better choice, but that said, everything we spoke about here today was just about really going in, sort of doing your own thing. If you have to take care of people there, maybe they want a six pack of beer or something like that, be really nice, always be attentive. And uh, if you're just a good person, then you can get some of this stuff, recycle it, and definitely put it to good use instead of it just getting completely just uh, crushed and not ever finding a home again. Because a lot of this stuff here even though it's old, it's gold, and it still plays games in 2021, especially some of the second, third, fourth gen stuff works absolutely fine. I'm really, really liking what this dumpster is unraveling because of course the best thing is you can get it for free. It costs absolutely nothing. So if you're on an extreme budget, then you can definitely, if you of course don't mind getting your hands dirty, you can get some extremely good value. But I guess that is the negative of dumpster diving, and that is it isn't the cleanest place to begin with. So if you are a, a clean freak or you hate bacteria and stuff like that, then maybe dumpster diving isn't for you. But ever since I started this channel, uh, especially since I've been getting into the used price performance stuff, I come across a lot of dirty stuff, and I usually find, this is a correlation that I've found, the dirtier it is, the cheaper it is. In this case, some of this stuff can be absolutely filthy, but it's free, and then we do our process of cleaning it up, and it can, a lot of the times, come out looking brand new, or in the case of the full tech yes love and process, can come out looking even better than brand new. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below, have you found anything on the side of the road or have you been dumpster diving before? And if so, did you come out with a good success story? Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. And we're also just recently uh, revamped the membership here on the channel for as little as $1.50 Aussie a month, which is around $1.10 US a month. You can get access to sort of like behind the scenes enthusiast stuff that I'm going into with how much I'm putting together PCs for, what I'm flipping, what the market's like for me locally. And to be honest, it has picked up a lot in this last like three and four days where it's just like all on now where you can go from not selling a PC for like a week or two weeks and then all of a sudden you sell five PCs in a day. That's how crazy the market can go sometimes. So uh, those monitors that I picked up, I cleaned them up. So I did pull some monitors out of the dumpster and they were working absolutely fine. So people are just chucking out uh, perfectly fine monitors, probably upgrading to the new 27 or 32 inch uh, latest and greatest 144 hertz stuff. And they're just, yeah, just getting rid of perfectly fine gear. So in my case, I like it. I give it a new home and I make a bit of money in the process. Though we do have the question of the day here before I get on out of here. And that comes from Leandro Martin Peralta. And they ask, hi, Brian, I noticed quite a few crypto mining sets advertised on Facebook Marketplace in my area lately, 
for quite ridiculous prices. Are miners cashing out or is this opportunist cashing in on the hype? And so you'll notice if you go on Marketplace, you'll notice sometimes there are people just selling whole mining rigs. They're definitely, a lot of these guys, I know some of them locally here because they used to be into PC flipping and I've talked about this on the channel in the past. They used to be into PC flipping, then they just got into flipping mining rigs and quit PC uh, flipping altogether. And the profits in that industry can be insane. So yes, I'd say some of these guys are just cashing in on uh, flipping mining rigs because there's a lot of, I guess, people who don't even know how to build a computer. They've heard from person X who's heard from person X that mining's so profitable, so they just come in cashed up, spend a heap of money, they just want something that's ready to go. And so if people are in that industry, definitely I'd say it's people more cashing in on the hype than it is. But I'd say at the same time, <laughs> there's definitely not a good economic news on the horizon, so I'd say some people as well would be cashing out. So I'd say it's a combination of both right now. Hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.